In earlier presentations, we've looked at the principles that govern the operation of automotive air conditioning systems and at the major system components and their roles in providing the vehicle operator with a comfortable environment. In this presentation, we'll look at the systems that enable the air conditioning system and the systems that allow the vehicle operator to set the temperature and distribution of the air inside the vehicle. Air conditioning system controls are electrical, vacuum, or mechanical and can be found in any combination of any and all types in different vehicles. We'll limit our initial discussion to components that are common to manual, semi-automatic, and automatic air conditioning systems. Later, we'll look specifically at the automatic air conditioning systems. Electrical systems that control air conditioning and air distribution operations are the fuses, circuit breakers, wiring and relays, compressor clutch, thermostats, pressure switches, master instrument panel control head, and blower motor. In order for an air conditioning system to work, the electromagnetic compressor clutch must receive current to engage the compressor and start the refrigeration cycle. A fuse or circuit breaker is used to protect the air conditioning and heating components and wiring. In addition to fuses and circuit breakers, some components may also be protected by fusible links. Regardless of whether you're dealing with a fuse, a circuit breaker, or a fusible link, the function is the same. Each device will open the electrical circuit in the event of high current flow caused by a short to ground in the circuit. A current flow higher than the rating of the fuse or fusible link will cause the fuse or fusible link to burn or melt, thereby causing an open circuit. Current flow in excess of the rating of a circuit breaker will cause the contacts in a circuit breaker to separate and open the circuit to interrupt current flow. Between the fuse and the compressor clutch circuit on most cars is an air conditioning on-off switch. In many cars, this switch is a part of the master control selector switch and is engaged as the selector is moved from the off position. Closing the switch will allow current to flow to the compressor clutch by way of an air conditioning relay. The electromagnetic compressor clutch requires a high current draw to engage the clutch. Because of this, most systems use an air conditioning relay. Relays are inexpensive ways to control high current circuits through a lower current circuit. Relays are electromagnetic switches. Most relays are normally open. When a low voltage is applied to the coil side of the relay, a magnetic field is created and the contacts inside the relay are pulled closed. With the exception of variable displacement compressors, all compressors use a compressor clutch to cycle the compressor on and off. In some systems, such as a CCOT, or cycling clutch orifice tube system, Cycling the compressor on and off regulates the temperature and pressure of the refrigerant pushed through the system. The compressor clutch is typically used to disengage the compressor when the evaporator has reached the desired temperature or when the air conditioner is not being used. Compressor clutches are electromagnetic clutches. Almost all of the compressor clutches found on cars since 1980 are stationary field clutches. A stationary field clutch has the field fixed to the compressor body by bolts. The rotor is held on the armature by a bearing and snap ring. The armature is mounted on the compressor shaft. When there is no current to the field, a magnetic force is not applied to the clutch and the rotor is free to turn on the armature that remains stationary on the crankshaft. When current is supplied to the field, a magnetic force is created between the field and the armature. The armature is pulled into the rotor and the complete unit turns. This coupling locks the compressor shaft to the clutch and the compressor crankshaft begins to turn with the clutch assembly. The refrigeration cycle then begins. The electromagnetic compressor clutch is turned on when cooling is desired and turned off when it is not through the control of current by switches and relays. The compressor clutch is often used to provide a means of in-vehicle temperature control. 
One way to accomplish this is through the use of a thermostat. Depending on the design, the thermostat is located either in the evaporator or in the outlet tube of the evaporator. The thermostat is an electrical switch that can be set by the driver to the average temperature that he or she desires. When the thermostat senses a temperature above that selected by the driver, the switches in the thermostat close and current is allowed to flow to the compressor clutch to engage the compressor. When the temperature drops below that desired by the driver, the contacts on the thermostat open and the flow of current to the compressor clutch is interrupted, stopping the compressor operation. Most thermostats use a temperature bulb and capillary tube similar to that of a thermostatic expansion valve. As the temperature increases, the liquid in the capillary tube acts on a bellows to force a set of contacts to close. As the temperature drops, the pressure in the capillary tube is released on the bellows and electrical contact pivots to open the compressor circuit. In this way, the compressor clutch is cycled on and off to maintain the desired in-vehicle temperature. Another way to control interior temperature is through the use of a pressure cycling switch. Pressure cycling switches are used on the cycling clutch orifice tube or CCOT air conditioning systems. Pressure cycling switches will open when the low pressure side of the system has a pressure at the low side of the operating range. A low pressure indicates that the refrigerant in the evaporator has a high capacity to absorb heat and that the evaporator is cooling air rapidly. As the vapor in the evaporator becomes superheated, the low side pressure will rise. The higher evaporator pressure indicates that the vapor is losing its ability to absorb heat and the air passing over the evaporator will be less cool. As the pressure rises to the higher end of the operating range, the pressure cycling switch contacts will close to engage the compressor clutch. Continually cycling the compressor clutch through the use of a pressure cycling switch will maintain a fairly constant in-vehicle temperature. Similar to fuses and circuit breakers that protect the electrical system from excessive current flow, the air conditioning system uses high and low pressure switches to protect the system components against mechanical failures. The high pressure switch on most systems is normally closed, meaning that it allows current flow through the switch to the compressor clutch under normal operating conditions. When the air conditioning system pressure on the high pressure side rises above the maximum value, the pressure acts on the switch to force the contacts open and interrupt current flow to the compressor clutch. Extremely high pressure in an air conditioning system can cause lines to rupture or components to be damaged. Extremely low pressure in an air conditioning system is an indication of a loss of refrigerant or a clogged or frozen metering device. A low pressure switch is located on the low side of the compressor circuit. As with the high pressure switch, the low pressure switch is normally closed. An abnormally low pressure will cause the contacts to open and interrupt current flow to the compressor. Some manufacturers will use a compressor discharge pressure switch to sense the pressure at the compressor discharge port. A normally closed switch, the compressor discharge pressure switch will open the circuit of the compressor when compressor outlet pressure is low. A low compressor discharge pressure is an indication of a low refrigerant charge. As the lubricating oil for the compressor is carried in the refrigerant charge, the discharge pressure switch interrupts current flow to the compressor clutch to prevent damage to the compressor.